You know, we wait all year for this, every June, and the day is here. We now know what 120 of the most powerful leaders in the world are going to be discussing at their annual meeting. I'm Sandra Rupp. I was placed on the Thinkers 50 Guru Radar list for the world's top business thinkers. I've been in the FT Alphavel. I've been on the cover of the Davos debates, and I'm ready for Bilderberg. Thanks so much for watching. The goal of the Bilderberg Group is to build stronger relations between North America and Europe. They used to say the United States and Europe, so that's kind of an interesting point there. Robert Rubin, who's the co-chair of the Council on Foreign Relations, will be there. So, you know, there's a little big link here between the Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum, Bilderberg, the United Nations, the European Union. There's a lot of interconnection there. You'll see um, people attending each other's meetings had a wonderful time at the Council on Foreign Relations holiday party several years ago. Now first off, they're staying at the nicest hotel in Dresden. It's called the Grand Hotel. They call it the Taz Hotel. It was actually a palace previously. It's all been renovated. So I think that our Bilderberg leaders will be well taken care of at this Kempinski Hotel. The CEO of Siemens is there. Henry Kissinger is always there, of course. Henry Kravis, Marie Jose Kravis will be there. It seems that it helps to be married to a powerful man to get invited. Um, so if any Bilderberg men are, you know, looking for a wife, um, I am on the market right now in Naples, Florida, and I'd love to get to Bilderberg one day. I have my first DVD. It will also be available as a video on demand coming out on Amazon.com this summer. And I talk about my life in executive search, my own career, my life working in the media for the creator of Entertainment Tonight, being an executive coach. I even talk about how I got viewers in 65 countries around the globe. We love Google, we love YouTube, we love Eric, so we're excited to see Eric there. People from the Financial Times, which I love, Martin Wolf will be there. We also have um, the editor of The Economist attending. I love their new article on freedom of speech and how it's under attack because I do believe that freedom of speech is the most valuable gift that any of us have and I think we need to protect freedom of speech, especially on social media. So I wanted to mention that uh, to Eric Schmidt and to Reid Hoffman. Christine Lagarde will be there. We love Christine. The CEO of Lazard is there, as he usually is, Ken Jacobs. I noticed a lot of European bankers are there this year. I'm actually in Jean-Paul Gaultier today. I wanted to wear a European dress. The CEO of Deutsche Bank is there. Um, Banco Santander. Really pretty bottom. It's um gorgeous, gorgeous long dress with ruffles on it. So anyway, I thought you Bilderbergers might like my dress. So, back to Bilderberg. I've just found out what they will be discussing at Bilderberg, and I wanted to share it with all of you. So here goes. We know in terms of current events, it will be about Trump, politics, Brexit, migration. Um, there's a lot going on. I think that one of the key topics also should really be job creation, because we need to have a lot more people invested in. We need to have a lot more job creation. We need to have a lot more vibrancy and focus on helping women become successful. The British Empire, I did my honors thesis on it. Very, very powerful country. Uh, Winston Churchill has talked about, uh, you know, if, if Britain must choose between uh, Europe and the open sea, she will always choose the open sea. And he actually said that in 1944. He actually shouted that to Charles de Gaulle on the eve of the Normandy landing. Um, so I wanted to just clarify that. Anne Applebaum, who is a columnist with the Washington Post, will be there. You know, they go by Chatham House rules. They're not able to talk about who said what. Chairman and CEO of Fiat is there. For any men who are interested in asking me out on a date, um, uh, I have um, hit a hole in one on a golf course at Piping Rock, actually. Won a ski shooting tournament. And I have even ridden to Daytona on the back of that motorcycle. Kellogg MBA, studied international business in Northern Oxford. Would love to see more women like me who used to work in the corporate world or as management consultants who are now founding companies. We have a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom to bring to World Economic Forum and to Bilderberg. 
So some of these people are on Twitter. I'm an exec career coach if you want to follow me. And I'm at career expert on YouTube. We don't know how much she can write about it, but we are excited to see Peggy Noonan on the list. She's a columnist for the Wall Street Journal. So there's a Catholic connection, I think, at Bilderberg. I've noticed that. You know, Henri de Castries is Catholic, of course. Michael O'Leary will be there from Ryanair. Royal Dutch Shell. We've got, you know, a lot of bankers and hedge fund guys. No question about that. The other interesting things that popped up to me, in addition to the sort of usual suspects, as we call them, Scott Malcolmson will be there. He is actually the author of Splinternet which is a book that talks about how the internet is changing. And he had actually been uh, New York Times Magazine. He had worked for the New York Times Magazine. He had worked for the United Nations and the State Department. So he actually has written a whole book on what he calls the splinter net. You might want to look that up. The first female CEO of Christie's uh, will be there. She is French, Patricia Barbizé. Uh, CEO of Artemis is going to be there. And uh, her husband actually heads investments at Barclays. The Prime Minister of the Netherlands will be there. We also have Ministers of Finance. Marcus Agius is going to be there. And he is the chairman of PA Consulting Group, but he actually is the former Barclays chair. Now, he's married to a woman who is a Rothschild, so I, I found that interesting. I find it interesting to see who's married to whom, because there's always a lot of sort of intermingling there when it comes to uh, Bilderberg. You know, Lindsey Graham is on the list here. So he's a Republican, which was interesting, but he is not necessarily Donald Trump's best friend. So, you know, that is sort of interesting that Lindsey Graham was invited. Will Donald Trump show up? I, I, ho I hope that Donald Trump has been invited. You know, oftentimes what happens with these political candidates for U.S. president is they're invited maybe for a day, for a portion of a meeting. They're usually not listed on the official list, which I have here. Um, so Lindsey Graham is listed, but I don't see Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton on the list. Uh, I do hope that Donald Trump will get uh, a day at Bilderberg. And you know, he did meet with Henry Kissinger um, just a couple weeks ago, so we're still hopeful. Well, today we know exactly what they're going to be discussing. So number one on the list is current events, and we can only imagine what all those are. Number two is China. Number three is Europe. Now, they specifically mention migration, growth, reform vision and unity because a lot of the people at Bilderberg are very pro-EU so they're very concerned about the potential Brexit but as we know there is a high likelihood that there will be a Brexit so I'm sure that they're a little bit nervous about that but it'll be interesting to know if anyone at Bilderberg is in favor of Brexit um, I'd love to know the answer to that one number four is the Middle East number five is Russia Number six is the U.S., and they specifically want to talk about the political landscape, the economy, growth, debt, and reform. Number seven is cybersecurity. Number eight is geopolitics of energy and commodity prices. Number nine, precariat and middle class. Now, for some of you who don't know what precariat is, it's sort of a category. There's a book written on this, but it's a category of people who don't have secure uh, jobs or a secure situation in terms of a paycheck. I think there's a lot that I could add on this topic because we really need to invest in more solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, especially the ladies uh, with angel investors, create some new financial mechanisms there. I think this really needs to be on Bilderberg's topic list. You know, I don't think that most people in the United States want to be called a precariat. It doesn't have like the greatest ring to it. So I think that um, we should just call them, you know, nice people who need secure uh, paychecks and situations. You know, bringing back pensions might be a good idea too. Uh, but I think that there's certainly a lot to discuss as it relates to job creation in the economy. I'm excited to see Klaus Schwab there because, uh, you know, there's a lot going on at the World Economic Forum that's very exciting. 
We need to get more women there, so we hope that Klaus will be discussing that at Bilderberg. We need to invest in a lot more women uh, founders, uh, angel invest them. It's not just the corporate women, it's not just promoting them to executive row, but it's also getting more women founders there. And especially women who are, you know, my age, who are over 45, um, you know, into their 50s, women that are incredibly accomplished in business, politics, uh, writers, video artists. The last topic is technological innovation. And you know, we know that there are a number of people from Silicon Valley on the steering committee, including the chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt, Peter Thiel of Thiel Capital. Um, I noticed that the, uh, the head of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, will be attending um, Y Combinator. Uh, there are a lot of techies on this list. There's also a gentleman from the UK who gets involved in um, n uh, actually cognitive neuroscience. He was actually from a gaming company previously, um, but is now uh, an expert on things like artificial intelligence. He had, uh, his name is Dennis Hossabus co-founder and CEO of DeepMind. So I think people should be checking out him a little bit more. Uh, there is some diversity here. I did notice that there's an African-American woman who will be attending from Chicago. Melody Hobson will be there. Now she's the president of Ariel Investment and she is actually on uh, the board of DreamWorks and is married to George Lucas, the mayor of the city of Rotterdam who's a Muslim gentleman, Ahmed Abu Talab, is going to be there. He was actually the first Muslim mayor of a European city. We now know that we have a Muslim mayor of London as well. So, all right. The CEO of Gruner and Jar, which is actually the largest publishing company in Europe, will be there. And her name is Julia Jacal. I know quite a bit about TIA Craft, having lived in New York um, so that is the teacher's insurance and annuity. That's the, the pension for the teachers. And um, it's a big fund of money. It's an asset management firm and an insurance company, essentially. So uh, Roger Ferguson is going to be there. They have a big chunk of money. Devesh uh, McCann is there. Jamie Johnson will be there. Um, Vernon Jordan, again, some Democratic uh, supporters are there. Because if you look at the sea of Honeywell, his name is David Coat. Uh, he actually um, started his career, or certainly worked for a big chunk of his career at General Electric. There was this Allied Signal and uh, Honeywell and then this potential merger with GE. That was all vetoed, I think, by the EU, as I recall. But um, David uh, had been on the board of J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, actually focuses a lot on debt reduction, and one of the things that he thought was that Americans are either going to have to have an increase in taxes or a decrease in Social Security. And he wouldn't need the Social Security, obviously. You know, that's one topic that I, I think needs to also just be discussed is the CEO compensation is just so enormously high, um, but the average worker pay really needs to go up. So I just, I just ask my Bilderberg um, CEOs to give some real thought to that, do some real soul searching on that because you know, the executive team has fared extremely well. We need to really up the ante on uh, the average worker pay. I think that's an important point for everyone at Bilderberg to know. Now, Richard Levin uh, is the former president of Yale University. Some of you may recognize that name. He's now the CEO of Coursera. There's a professor of history from Harvard University, and that is Neil Ferguson. So that will be an interesting addition to the conversation. I've always learned so much from history, even more than my MBA. You know, history really tells you a lot about human nature. And one of my first mentors, who was CEO of a television network, actually, he told me that the one thing that never changes throughout human history is is human nature. So, so if the older generation had grown up and today's younger generation, you would see the same kind of behaviors because indeed human nature doesn't change. It's history that changes and I think that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, I could talk a lot more about that, but I'll save it for when I go to Bilderberg. Helen Goodman is the only senior UK politician. Of course, a lot of people in Britain are talking about wanting to leave the European Union, and that is a very hot topic for Bilderberg Group. I think that over time, people will get used to the Brexit. I think that, you know, sometimes Britain has always been very independent. Uh, oh, 
Dido Harding from Great Britain. She's CEO of Talk Talk Telecom Group. Now they, of course, are internet and uh, pay TV and um, a lot of interesting services. Uh, they um, had a data breach apparently, and she will be there. It'll be interesting to to find out what Dido Harding has to say about her experience of running a company in the internet and television pay TV business. David Petraeus will be there. We even have an astronaut attending from Canada. Chris Hatfield will be there. So that will add some interesting, um, I'm sure, discussion about what it's like to be in space. So I'm, you know, I'm up for a little bit of adventure. Um, I stand about six foot tall in my Jimmy Choo, so I wanted to mention that I'm five, nine and a half. Um, but, you know, I'm open on height. Okay. Whew. The editor-in-chief of Bloomberg will also be there. But I do think that NBC could do um, a lot more nice features on Donald Trump. Uh, I think CBS has done a great job, and I follow all the networks. My father was in the industry. Megan McArdle uh, from Bloomberg View will be there. It's nice to see a number of ladies attending, you know, because only 10% women on the steering committee. And as I mentioned in my prior video, I'd like to see uh, more American women on the steering committee. So I've gotten a lot of compliments on him. And as you know, I always cover Davos. Um, we have a whole blog dedicated to Davos at sandrarep.wordpress.com. If you are an executive, you're in career transition, or you're aspiring to be a creative entrepreneur, or if you just want to build a brand on the internet, this video is for you. I've worked over a year on it. I'll be having a series of videos and DVDs on Amazon.com. So do watch for Career Navigation, Seven Steps to Success. I've actually got a whole multimedia business plan on how to make many more people successful, both men and women. Investors, please check out my listing for Parthenon Advisors at angel.co. I'm Sandra Rupp, and I was placed on the Thinkers 50 Guru Radar list for the world's top business thinkers. Thank you so much for watching. It was even interviewed by a Wall Street Journal reporter for the book, Why Smart Men Marry Smart Women. The Ritz Carlton is here. I also like La Playa. There's this beautiful uh, restaurant called Baleen, and you can watch the sunset. It's lovely. So anyway, uh, downtown we've got you know a few restaurants, two Lux and some others. But um, well, we'll just see what goes on. You know, we'll see. Okay. Whew.